In your artificial selection investigation, you gather data on the target trait in a parental population and their offspring population. And many of you saw differences in the traits between these two populations. But how do you know if these differences are significant? And how do you know if your data is really valid? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple uh, types of statistical analysis that will help you determine if the differences are significant and valid. The first statistical measure we'll look at is mean, and this you're probably very familiar with. Let's say that this is your sample population of plants. You would measure the height of each plant, if that were your target trait, add up the heights and divide by the total number, which is five. And in this case, the mean or average height of our population is three centimeters. And this is helpful because you could now compare the average height of this population with the average height of their offspring population. However, you have to be careful not to stop here. Let's say you looked at a different population of plants and you measured their height, and you found that the mean was three centimeters. You might be tempted to say that the two populations are the same, but really, this population has very different individual heights. As you can see, these heights are much closer to the average height of three centimeters. So here, another statistical measure called standard deviation is useful. And this is a measure of variance. It shows how much each value, each individual plant, varies on average from the average value for your population. So we would calculate standard deviation using this formula, and we'll practice that later. And in this case, we would get that the standard deviation is 0.4 centimeters. What that means is that each plant on average is either about 0.4 centimeters greater or less than the mean of three centimeters. Now if we compare that to the first population we looked at, we can see that the standard deviation is 1.6. So each of these plants is much further from the mean on average than our other population. And calculating standard deviation will tell you that. In general, the larger the standard deviation, the larger this number, the larger the difference on average between each individual value and the mean of the population. Now let's consider validity. Here we have our sample population with five plants and their mean height was three centimeters. But this is only five plants. How do we know that this small sample is representative of an actual population? Perhaps in the real population of many, many, many plants, the mean is 3.4 centimeters. We need a way of measuring just how close your mean is to the real mean. And we do that by calculating the standard error of the mean. And this is a measure of precision. It shows how close your mean is to the real mean and we abbreviate this with SE. And the formula looks like this. It is the standard deviation, which we saw earlier, divided by the square root of the sample size. N is the number of plants in your sample. In this case, N would be five. Now, calculating standard error will give us something called confidence intervals. Let's say here's our sample population with a mean of three centimeters and a standard error that's been calculated to be 0.3. Well, what does that 0.3 really mean? Well, within an interval of one standard error, in other words, within an interval of 0.3, you can be 68% certain that your sample's mean is the real mean. So in other words, if the SE interval for this sample is 0.3, you can be 68% certain that the real mean falls between 2.7, which is 0.3 below the mean, or 3.3, which is 0.3 above the mean. 
So plus or minus one standard error interval is just one times whatever your standard error is. Now you might be thinking 68%, that's not very certain. I would like to be more certain. Well, then you could do an interval of plus or minus two standard errors. Within this interval, you can now be 95% certain that the sample's mean is the real mean. So in this scenario, the plus or minus two standard error interval would be plus or minus 0.6 because we're going to multiply two times our standard error. So within this interval, we can now be 95% certain that the real mean falls somewhere between 2.4, which is 0.6 less than the mean, and 3.6, which is 0.6 more than the mean. Now here's how you would show this graphically. Let's say you gathered this data. You were investigating height in a parental population and their offspring generation. Your sample size is 30, 30 plants in each one. The mean for the parental generation was three. The mean for the F1 generation was five centimeters. Here's your standard deviation, which tells us just how much the actual plants varied from the mean. And here's the calculated standard error. Now we want to be really confident. So when we find the standard error, we're going to find the 95% confidence interval. So we multiply this by two and we multiply this by two. Then we go to graph it. And so here's our graph of the mean height in the parental generation, was three, and the mean height in the offspring generation, which was five. Then we make an error bar to show this plus or minus two standard error confidence interval. And so here I have made the error bar so that it goes 0.6 below the mean and then 0.6 above the mean because my 95% interval was 0.6. For this generation though, the error bar is a little bit smaller. I've made it 0.5 below the mean and then 0.5 above the mean because the 95% confidence interval was plus or minus 2SE for 0.5. Now, what does this mean? Well, since our error bars don't overlap, it means that the difference between the two means is pretty significant. Because even if the real mean of this parental population was 3.6, and even if the real mean of this offspring population was 4.5, that's still a gap between the means. And so now I can say with confidence that these means are significantly different and some sort of evolution occurred in my F1 population. So in class you will make graphs uh, showing the means and the error bars for your data. And keep in mind that the overlap will tell you whether or not the difference between your data sets is significant.